Hola que tal YouTube, hey what's up YouTube, welcome to another YouTube tutorial video uh, Today we're going to continue with login, registration, some private uh, routes So protected routes, we're also going to be seeing um, editing I believe I didn't touch upon editing um, the, the books And hopefully we can finish today If we have time, I also want to be able to go over uh, deployment, it'll be simple deployment, so something like Heroku and, and Netlify, but we'll see about the time. So yeah, let's go to the tutorial video. to like you know keep track of where I left off um, but okay so we have the login we have the sign up so let's test this on postman and by the way make sure obviously to, to have your app running close this so I have this running working with this 
the whole time, so it's it's all right if we don't swim it all the way. Uh, okay, so this user doesn't exist, so let's try sign up. So sign up. All right, perfect. So we can sign up and we can log in. We have everything done on the back end. Uh, just to recap. two inputs where the first one is going to be the email so placeholder equals email and I mean there's going to be more stuff that I want to add but for now I'll just leave that Bottom, BTN, BTN, uh, star. it's been a long time I forgot like a couple of classes we've been ramming a lot with uh, material you A little bit weird to make that decision, but anyway. Um, we're gonna put the button here that says log in. Okay. Just wanna put this in their own line because later we're going to add more stuff, so I'm going to go ahead and create a register component and we don't have that component created so we're going to create it right now register view close that so I'm going to go ahead and create that component so new file register view.js and same thing uh, I'm actually going to create now a component with an anonymous function so const register view just so you guys are exposed to both ways of you know creating components uh, register view there you go and i'm gonna return actually i like to i always like to create a div with a container because it gives space and i'm gonna put a margin top 
five, and it's just going to be a register. There you go. So you can see that. Oh, I need to import this. There you go. And my auto import should pop out. There you go. My computer is a little bit slow today, but that's fine. Let's add a little bit of CSS or bootstrap. So I'm gonna put form control. And I'm gonna do the same here. Form control, okay, I mean, uh, it is what it is. But I don't know if you guys remember, uh, we created a CSS file called .form. And essentially what this does is, um, well, it'll style our form. And I called it just form, not login form or register form or app product form because I want the same style for every single form. So I can just do this. Now, obviously, well, I think it's already imported in another file. So as long as the form.css is imported in another file, like the app book view, which we do have here, it should, yeah, there you go. It picks up the same styling. So to import it multiple times as long as this is imported in one file why because this app book uh, view is imported in the app.js so essentially you, you're sharing uh, CSS classes that's the reason why uh, let me close this okay so I have that I can close this okay so I have that too By the way, uh, and I used to, I used to do this a lot. Uh, just leave the, the object like that, like with no attributes, no nothing. Thinking that it was cleaner, but in reality, you need to specify like all the attributes that you're going to be changing. Otherwise, your component is not going to be controlled because you're not controlling the change of state of the email. And by the way, this is password. So even if you have like 12 attributes that you're going to be changing, you will have to write them down here. And you state we need to import this. And I'm gonna have to do it manually apparently. So this is going to be from React. There you go. So handle change, whenever we have a uh, change of state, what we're going to do is the following. We're going to make use of our set user um, updater function. So we're gonna say set user and essentially we'll want to keep all the other attributes that we're not changing to, to be exactly the same as they were, but we do want to change the ones that we are targeting. So how do we target them? With event.target.name and you may say, okay, name, where, where does the name come from? I know that I've said this before with the app product, but I'm going to reiterate on this. So essentially, uh, let me see if I can just, there you go. So essentially, I'm going to put a name here. This is the name of the key, the name of the attribute that we're changing. So because we're changing the email uh, here, the name will be equal to email. That way we know we are changing the email attribute and we're going to set it equal to target dot value. So here the value as maybe you've guessed 
this is going to be the user dot email that will be the value that we're changing so same thing with the with the password the name will be password so that's the name of the attribute and the value will be the user dot password because that will be the value that will be constantly updating by the way i want to make a <laughs> how do you say a quick note before i used to give a little bit of a hard time on this play not this play this the, the artist that created this who is a chilean hola beats he's a chilean uh, youtuber really good youtuber and he was very nice enough to create all this free music by the way i take back whatever not so good comments i've made before i actually really like this uh, music he's made and he's nice enough to give for free so uh, kudos on him and check check his youtube channel uh, he has some really good stuff obviously it's targeted to uh, to the hispanic audience so you know um, not everybody will be able to understand what he's saying but if you speak spanish uh, by all means he, he's a really good youtuber um, okay so moving on we have the handle change what we're going to do now, the last thing that we need to do is on every single input, whenever we have an onChange event, we're gonna pass the handle change function. Now we don't have to actually, you, you should not and you cannot, well, you can, but you should not um, make the function uh, call like that because that means that doesn't matter whether there's a change of event or not, it'll be called you don't want you only want this to be changed whenever there's an unchange of event essentially what you're doing is a callback meaning like only then only if and only if there's a change of event then call the handle change otherwise you don't do it but in javascript because this is empty and this is empty as you know javascript people like to do they like to shorthand stuff and that's just exactly the same so you know just as an FYI. So we're gonna do the same here and I'm going to create another function called handle submit. So whenever we are submitting, which by the way, I want to prevent the reload. Uh, I want my web page to reload, hence event prevent default. And for now, I just want to console log the values of the user. So that way I can know that I'm, you know, um, updating the user properly. Now, there's two things that you can do. You can do on submit, right? And then pass the handle submit. Or you can use the bottom for the unclick. Either or is fine. Uh, I believe I had the unclick on the other form. Right now, I'm just going to leave the on submit. That way you guys can see just different ways of doing things so I'm gonna go here and let's open this I'm gonna put I don't know uh, oh event target is undefined maybe I misspelled something mm, event yeah I did same here all right so now we should see the proper thing hopefully so this is not going to do anything uh other than console log whoa okay so here i don't know if you can see let me zoom this in so here's adri and password i just like typed like you know whatever uh oh this from the previous load okay it's not the current so we shouldn't get any errors but it has been never used in book card okay that's fine that's just a warning record hook effect has a dependency okay warnings um honestly i don't like having a bunch of warnings but i'm not gonna worry about the warnings right now uh, later on your own you can go ahead and get rid of the warnings uh unhandled promises deprecation
gave me an error, but it returned the object regardless, so I, it might have not been saved. So I made the call right away from here. Okay, so I'll make the call within within the function. Honestly, I since we have plenty of time to do a bunch of stuff, I'm actually going to refactor this. I don't like the way it's set up currently. So what I'm gonna do is the following. I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna call this services. So services essentially, by the way, for those of you who have done Context, React Context, which by the way, uh, I plan to do a tutorial with uh, React Context and React Native at the same time and TypeScript. That way, we killed like three birds uh, with one stone. But uh, yeah, that being said, essentially, services is where you want to have all your functionality, and that way, you can, um, you know, just put. Uh, Conch response away login to API. You don't have to type this. It, it, it's not that bad. This is just a one-liner, but it, it gives a little bit more or to the project essentially. So that's what we're going to do here. I'm going to create a new file. I'm going to call this op service. Actually, I'm going to create another file also for the books, book service or book service. Yeah, book service. That's fine. Uh, we're not gonna be doing. Should I just do it right now? Let's see. Okay, yeah, let's do the refactor quickly. Since we're refactoring everything, why not? So, what I'm going to do is the following I'm actually gonna copy this before I delete it. So, I'm gonna do. Export. Oh my god. Uh, export. This is going to be my create book. So, and it's a constant. So export const. So whenever we create a Whenever we want to create a book, we will make a call to the create book. We need to pass a book object. So I'm going to call this book object. And we're going to make a call to this uh, endpoint. Obviously, we don't have the constant API URL because that is inside of our add book view. And I want to refactor this because essentially what we're doing here will be exactly the same or very similar to our login view. Hence why I want to refactor it uh, right now. So now what I can do is instead of uh, Axios post, I can do create book. And so I got the auto import, but in case that you guys don't get the auto import, um, this is the path. And here in, I, I just passed the, the book object, which remember the book object is uh, this variable that is storing the object with all the attributes uh, from the book. Same thing, uh, and just to prove that this works, uh, access is not fine, obviously missed this import, so I'm gonna cut this since we're not using access here anymore. Uh, and that should be fine, let's see. There you go, no more errors. So I'm gonna go to add, add 
book just so you guys can see and currently i mean i'm trying to read this book uh definitely need to keep on going <laughs> but uh yeah so the name is Sinue the egyptian i'm reading it in spanish it's been a while since i've read it in spanish but the egyptian well, apparently it's just the egyptian in english in spanish is Sinue the egyptian I'm just gonna write it. Sinue the Egyptian. Author Mika Valtari, and hopefully I didn't butcher. Okay, Mika Valtari. Valtari. German family, maybe? some sort of philosophy from what I heard and talked with and talked to people with oh no tell me based on that there you go okay so I, it just needed a refresh okay so it's still working there you go perfect so now um, this works so now we're gonna do exactly the same but with the login because that's what we were trying to get at so what I'm going to do here, uh, I'm actually going to open side by side the login, I mean the book service and the login service. Because essentially we're going to require both Axios and our API URL. And here I'm going to export const login user to API. We're just login user, honestly. Uh, we're gonna have pass a user object. And we're gonna make an Axios post request to the API URL slash of slash login and pass the user like so. So that is our That is our quote. That will return a a response. So we could actually do the following: con response equals wait. We can put async here, and then we just return response. Uh, here we don't care about the response really because you know the a, the view will um, how do you say handle the request of the new book on its own. But here we do care about the response because we will get a token or the user data and we want to do something with it. So that is why here, instead of console log, we're going to do the following. And this will also be an asynchronous function. Uh, so here I'm just going to put cons response equals await login user, where I'm going to pass a user. And for now, I just want to console log the response see what happens just to make sure we user is not defined what do you mean user is right there dot service oh user object yeah i forgot to change this too there you go okay and let's go to postman because i want to make sure that a user exists So let's see, by the way, I'm curious if this saved. Ah, so this didn't save. Interesting. So even though it did return me the object, it actually didn't uh, save the previous user in the database. So I'm gonna sign up this user again. All right, so now I'm gonna try to log this user in. All right, perfect. So we get all the information. Excellent. All right, so now we should be able to see something if we go to login. And by the way, I'm gonna change this right now. It looks horrible, but I 
was running out of time last time, so that's why I left it like so. But I definitely want to change that. Uh, so add it at tabs.com and it's password one two three. Obviously, we'll we'll change this to right now. Uh -huh. So we do get a response, and actually, we don't care about this whole thing. The only thing that we care is about the data, right? Because inside of the data, we have the user data. So I'm just gonna change this console log response dot data. So I'm going to do the same, and now we get only the user, which is perfect. It's what we care for. Um, awesome. Okay, so we have that. We have the user, and we have the response to the data, and obviously after that we want to clear everything that we've entered so whenever we submit on the next time this will be cleared out also this input should be type password not text so now you should see there you go perfect uh, before I continue with the um, protector routes there's one important thing that I want to add which is the um, token uh, generation so there's a lot of things that you can do with JWT um, oh man. sorry uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things that you can do with JWT but we don't have enough time to do so I'm just gonna do something yeah, basic if we have more time I'll add uh, you know the complexity that that uh, JWT allows you to implement but at least you will have like the building block so of what is JWT and what you can do with it so we're gonna go ahead into our back end and in our back end we're going to create another folder and I'm gonna call this helpers so I'm gonna create a new folder called helpers and some of these helpers I'm gonna call this uh, process jwt.js why process jwt and by the way jwt stands for json web token because we're going to be creating json web tokens there later we could validate and revalidate uh, json web tokens so hence we're going to do all the processing of jwt and let me get my notes because i don't know this by memory and you guys shouldn't learn anything by memory. Uh, as long as you understand the high level idea, you guys are fine. So what the hell, where is my, huh? Oh, this is not the right uh, repo. Cause I was looking at my repo Come. whenever I record like the, the tall in my CPU tends to be high hence why the terminal or my you know this is a little bit slow sometimes but anyway so we're going to install JSON web token and let me see if there's anything else but I believe that that should be it Sometimes this happens 
if you are running you're backing at the same time so i'm just gonna quit this let's see if no i can't install it Annoying. Okay, uh, so the file is contained in directories. Try running the command again as a root. So maybe with a sudo sudo npm install json web token. And I misspelled it. How annoying. There you go. Don't worry about the red. No uh, red. Oh my god. This happens sometimes whenever uh, VS Code is acting up, so I'm just gonna close my terminal. It's, it's a little bit annoying, but I know that that works sometimes. You know, the classical, have you ever tried turning it on and off? Works. I'm not in the I like to open my visual visual code studio with both the front and back end so I did code dot dot like to go out and not like uh, open visual code studio just in the back end and then I did dot that way I open visual code studio both in the back and the front which is essentially us just doing you know that and then code and dot in case you were curious Start this. Start that. And while that starts, Oof. Sorry, uh, I'm reading something. I mean, while it started, uh, I mean, while the server starts, but. Uh... Alright. So, there you go, we have that going on. Uh, I'm gonna close this instance since we already have a, a new one. So, I'm gonna go back to my login. We have this, and we have everything in place. Now, with the. Uh, JWT library installed. Let me see how long we've been programming for 37 minutes. Okay, it's not bad. Uh, I'll put a little bit of pep in my step, but we're actually not that uh, out of uh, schedule, I guess, or whatever. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and create this. Um, uh, um, method. Jesus, sorry, I don't know. I spaced that bit. We're gonna create a method to generate this JSON Web Token. So we're gonna use the JSON Web Token uh, library that was giving us a lot of pain. So now here, I'll create the function generate JWT, where I'm going to be passing an ID as a parameter. This is going to be a promise. Which if you remember, or if you know or don't know, you have a resolve and a reject parameter. Where if it's resolved, meaning it was successful, if, it re if the promise is rejected, it means it failed. And this can, you know, it, it gives a lot of functionalities to use promises. Because you can say like, oh, for example, you know, kind of like, like, a, like a bank gives out a loan. So then the, the loanee says, like, I promise you that I'll give you this money plus 3%. So if the loanee fulfills his promise, then the bank can do something else with that money that he recouped. 
Uh, otherwise, if the promise was rejected or just failed, then uh, obviously the bank is at a loss. But the, the thing in programming is that this allows you to have more functionality compared to callbacks, so hence um, promises are very useful. It gives you flexibility in terms of what you get in return uh, from the promise. So I'm gonna be using the ID, and by the way, here this is a short this is a shorthand way of creating an object. So I'm just gonna leave it like that, and you need to create an object. So that's why I'm putting it like so, where uh, I'm going to be using the secret key. So I'm gonna check if I already have it. If not, I'll create it right now. And I'm gonna put an expiration, and I'll put that every single token will expire in four hours. Which honestly, there's a way to check for expiration, but for now we won't. And later on, I can show you how to, you know, do revalidation of tokens and whatnot. But we'll live it like so though. Before we move on, I'm gonna go to the MV in the back end and I'm gonna create a secret key. So I'm gonna say secret key, and by the way, this is totally random. So I'm just gonna put num <coughs> letters, numbers, letters, numbers, letters, numbers, letters, numbers. That's it. Totally random. Very important though, that secret key does have some sort of, uh, well, as you can see, it has an influence in the creation of the JWT. So if you change it, uh, if you try to validate it against like an old key, it may give an error. But again, I don't think we'll have time to do validation in this video. Though something important for you guys to, you know, have at the back of, of, of your mind. So if we have an error, then we will reject with the error, meaning something went wrong with the process, with the library, with the network, etc, etc, etc. If we didn't get an error, then we will return the token. And that's it. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is export this. So module.exports equals generate JWT. That's it. Why do we want that? Well, that is because, and by the way, we need to restart this so that the backend can take the most up to date .emv. So I restarted my server manually. Let me see if I can zoom this in a bit. There you go. There you go. Uh, all right, so on the login, here we already have the generate JWT function working. So now we're going to implement it. Essentially, we're just gonna generate a JWT and return both a user and a token to our front end. So here, what I'm going to do is just call that uh, generate JWT. Where's my auto import process? Let's see. Generate JWT. There you go. So essentially, you see how here it hints that I need an ID. The ID is gonna be coming from the user. So I'm gonna pass the user underscore ID. Cause that's, you know, that's how the backend saves the ID. And I believe, well, other than that, obviously I'm gonna be passing the, well, I need to save this to token equals, const token equals generate JWT. So I'm gonna say token comma user, which again, this is an object, we're just doing that and that. But again, JavaScript likes to shorthand a lot of things. And once you understand them, uh, you know, it saves you some typing, so why not? Uh, const token, uh, uh, okay. I'm not sure if I need to put a wait. You know what? I'm gonna test it right now because why not? I'm gonna make sure if I really need to put that away. I believe I don't. So now we should see uh, not only the user, uh, and by the way, this will be inside of a user key, but also a token. 
Ah, we do see an empty token, so maybe we do have to wait. So let's try that now. Ah, okay. So we do need to put a wait, otherwise this will be empty. Okay. All right, so now we have that token. So what is this token? This is like an, a unique soup of letters that only this user, whenever he logs in, gets that. That way we know that user is authenticated. It's just a way of securing uh, users' uh, logins. And essentially, if we type here the same thing, avity at tes.com, and then password123, we get the same thing. We get the token and the user. Excellent. So now the, the next thing that we need to do, and this will be very important for protected routes and whatnot, in the front end, in the auth service, we will um, actually, I don't even know if we need the response because we're going to do, I mean, we don't need to return the response because here what we're going to do is the following. So first things first, uh, we're gonna get a a response data, right? With the response that data, we're gonna get a user. And we're gonna get a to a token. So we're going to destructure that from the response of data. And what I want to do is the following: the local storage. I want to set an item, and I'm going to call this JWT library um, YT as YouTube. I want to do um, JSON dot stringify. Very quick thing. I always confused myself with which one should I use, whether stringify or parse. Uh, and later somewhere I wrote, I, I read this, and now it makes sense. I never get confused. So essentially, JSON, a JSON, you know, by the way, JSON stands for uh, where it's a JavaScript ob object notation. J JSON is a string. Like the JavaScript object notation is a string that has a standard that every single language follows. Why? Because strings are available in every single language. Every single language. So Java, C Sharp, Ross, C, C++, you name it. Every single language has a data type string. So the way that we format this string is in a certain way, which is in it is in the JavaScript object notation way, where you have, you know, a name. You know, Arturo, and you know, you have age, and then you have, you know, the, the data type, whatever. This is actually a string. Like behind the scenes, this will be parsed to that, or this will be converted to that. So that that is why you actually want to stringify it. Whenever you want to, you know, turn it back from a string into a uh, JavaScript object, you parse it. So if you wanted to convert it into a JSON object, you stringify it. Okay, so that was just you know my two cents. <laughs> so what we want to stringify is the following: we actually want to pass a user with the user dot email because I really don't care for the rest, and I want to also stringify the token. So I'm gonna put that where the token is just essentially doing the same as that. So I'm gonna have a key and value for the token. And then if we want, we can return the response, but it really doesn't matter. Um, but we're going to have this in the local storage, which is very important. And you'll see why right now uh, when we do the protector routes. So right now I'm actually going to go to my uh, storage. And by the way, in Google Chrome, I believe it's application. And then you have like storage or local storage. Let me see if I have Chrome here. I, I particularly don't like to use Chrome, but I know a lot of people use Chrome. So essentially we go to, yeah, application and then local storage. So that's that's where you go in Chrome. Uh, in Firefox, it's just storage. So you go to local storage and here, you know, these are my other applications. Um, for me, it's just easy to see the JWT, which is why I like to put that, at least for experiments. So right now I don't have JWT library, which is this application right here. So why is this the ruler thing? There you go. All right, so I'm gonna put avity at tas.com and I'm gonna put 
password123 and we should see a new key here and there you go library uh, jdt library yt for youtube so the important thing here is that we not only have the token but we also have the user and actually should put everything within the user like not only the the user email but also like the user and whatnot so probably i'm just gonna leave it like that because i want the user name the user role etc etc um probably we don't want the id but it's not a big deal if we show that uh what i could do though is here i could say underscore id and then everything else leave it within the user get the ID out of the way and then everything else keep it in, like using the spread operator but let's see yeah there you go that's here that I was looking for um, user This should work. So addity at test.com and then password one two three. Alright, so now I would I should have everything except for the ID. Okay, so I I'm fine with that. So here we have the role, the email, and the name. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and start creating our protected routes. Uh, so let's start by, I, I don't like the way this looks. I don't know where the I don't know how it gets. You see, well, it gets higher and higher, but. All right, so let's change the navbar links. Uh, like CSS, I mean. Let me create a new CSS file. So navbar.css. And I'm going to import it here. So import nav bar.css. All right. Okay, maybe that was a little bit too low. There you go. That's not bad. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with the links. Alright, so first I want to get rid of the underline and the color. And every single link is within a uh, link tag which uh, converts to converts to a sorry converts to an a tag. So if we want to change that, we can go here and say a Tags, decoration, none, and color white. There you go. Pretty simple. And let's do font weight of six hundred. That's not bad. Okay, I do see that this is a little bit above this, but nah, that's fine. Okay. So it's looking a little bit better. Kind of. But, you know. 
Uh, we'll deal with the sign up right now. Essentially, sign up is the same as creating a new uh, entity. So you can add a book, which we've done. Then you can easily implement the sign up. S same process. So I'm going to leave that at the end in case that we run out of time. And let's see how long have I been doing this for. Okay, that's not bad. my camera started acting up so probably you see like those those dots behind me but uh, uh let's just carry on uh, yeah and i am uh, it is what it is okay so what we're going to do right now we already have the token stored we're going to start creating the protected routes and you know a few other things because that those are the things that we uh, cared for right and actually i'm also going to go ahead and just add the register stuff uh, i'm actually gonna i'm not gonna copy everything but definitely i am going to copy the form so i'm gonna go to my register view So that's my initial state. I need to have an import by React. There you go. So let me check. Okay, that's my import. I need to have a handle change. So cause handle change. I'm going to pass an event, set user, and whatever key I'm not changing, I'm just going to pass like so. Otherwise, I'm going to do event target.name set that equal to event.target.value and the submit function const handle submit where it is async event so very similar to so uh, very similar to to login but it's not going to be the same where here I'm going to do prevent defaults and then here I'm going to do cons response equals to wait and here will be register user where I pass a user and then I can do set user and put everything inside of here as the initial state. So now the only thing that I'm left with is, well first of all I need to create an input. Actually, do Alt Shift Up Mac. I think it's Option Shift Up. Um, that's how you copy really quickly upwards. Here, I'm just gonna put name, and instead of login, this will be register. And here, instead of login, again register. Am I missing something? I don't think so. Obviously, this needs to exist in the um, out service, otherwise, it's not going to work. So, in the out service, register user, where we're going to pass the user object. Con response equals await dot post. And very similar to login again. We are going to make a call to the I believe it was sign up. Um, was it auth route? No, user route. There you go. So it's not login but sign up. There you go. Sign up. I mean sorry, it's not register but sign up. Where we're gonna pass the user object as a parameter. Then if we want, we can just do return response. Very important, let's not forget the await. And that's it. Oh, I didn't see that. Uh, this is access, not await. 
Okay, so that's it. So now here, I'm gonna go back to my register. Where here, I just need to make sure this is imported. checking our local storage so what we're going to do is the following we want to make sure whether a user is authenticated or not by authenticated is just whether he has signed in or not so we're gonna call this method is authenticated now you're gonna go like wait hold on a second like where's this coming from aha we're gonna create it in our auth service that way we have some sort of modularity. So we're gonna do export const is authenticated. Where we're not gonna pass anything, but we want to make sure again that we have something on the local storage. So what we're going to do is the following. I'm gonna do local storage dot get item because we wanna make sure that we get an item. And by the way, this will be const user. And we wanna get the item that belongs to the JWT library YT token, right? Or I mean, that belongs to this key. And I believe we also need to parse everything. Uh, so I believe it has to be JSON parse, blah, 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 blah. Because remember, this is a whole JSON web token, so we need to parse it. But let me double check. Okay, so what we can do is if user, meaning like if there is something there, then we return the user, otherwise, return false. 
meaning there was nothing there, therefore the user is not authenticated. Uh, why is this useful? Because uh, it's useful because if we have an object with a new with with a user, then the user did sign it. By the way, this is just to make sure that people are signing within a browser. So if there's no window object, obviously they cannot sign in, meaning they cannot try to do this through, you know, Postman or whatever. And we'll, we'll just return false. It's not a, like, just because we do this doesn't mean that is 100% secure, but it's a little bit more secure. Just a, you know, small extra Again, not uh, secure type, but still, it helps. So now that we have this user object, then we want to do the following. We don't want to show, so essentially, if we have a user object, we won't show no sign of and login. We want to show a link. React Bootstrap. I can use a normal button. But, you know, why not? So, this is going to be a class BTN, BTN uh, at line dark. Because, why not? BTN. Dark outline. Uh, I know I have it on my login form. Let's see between dark. No, in my ad, ad book form. Uh, BTN outline dark. Yeah, that's what I have. Uh, my nav bar. That is strange. You see how this changed suddenly? Um, uh, something happened here. Something with the import. Let me see. No console log errors. That is very strange. Um, I'm gonna restart this because the link should be white. Though something to notice, I don't see the login or logout, I mean the login or, or register anymore, which is a good sign. It means that our is authenticated method is working, but this should not appear, which annoys me a little bit. I'm just gonna look at this, this is the same. I don't know why Windows does that, but. Okay, so I'm gonna refresh. Uh, okay, so it's not a pre compile error. Okay, so on hover it has this color, but it should have a Thank you. 
that's weird. So I have it on the A tags. this color but whatever uh, I'm gonna put a white background color white Okay, log out. So the last thing, what do you guys think that we need to do when we log out? Well, very easy. We just need to get rid of the uh, of the um, damn it. <laughs> we need to get rid of the uh, of the local storage token. So whenever we hit this, then we should see the other two, you know, login and register buttons. That's that's essentially it. So I'm going to go to Nathbar. Here I'm going to create my logout function. So cons logout. I could actually, you know, I could put this on the odd service. So odd service, I'm just gonna do here cons export cons logout. That way we have everything here. And it's very simple. Here the only thing that we need to do is the following. Local storage dot remove item where the JWT, essentially the same string. Now, something that is useful here um, that I just started doing is JWT string, and then put that there. That way here, instead of writing this over and over again, where we're prone for errors, I just put that there. Uh, so I'm also gonna put that here. And I'm also gonna put this here. Okay, so same thing. That way, you know, if you decide to change it, you just change the string here and automatically, you know, uh, cascades down to all the JWT string variables here. Now, in the nav bar, whenever we hit this button, whenever we click it, so on click, Jesus, on click, we're gonna call the logout function. And by the way, this should have been auto imported. Okay, so now we have that 
And you may be thinking, okay, so we saw all that and we haven't seen register. Cool, what now? Well, now we can use our protected routes because now we have um, the information about the user. So the way that we do that is in the following way. I'm gonna create two new components. One is, and not folders, uh, files. So one is gonna be in auth route where only people that are authenticated uh, can see these routes. So, and I will go to my notes. So the this is how we're going to be doing it. So I'm gonna call this on route, uh, where we're going to get the user. And we want to make sure that the user is authenticated because all the logic will rely on that. And if the user is authenticated, whatever we're trying to return or whatever, whichever route or view we're trying to get at, we're going to return it. Otherwise, if the, if the user is not authenticated, we return the login view. And that's it, S super simple, super, super simple. How can we apply this to our uh, application? So we're gonna go to our, to our app touches. Now let's say that we don't want them to see the book details if they're not logged in. So we're gonna do the following. We're gonna create or yeah, create a auth route component. And then inside of that auth route, we're gonna put it inside our book details view, right? And I think that is the way it should be set up, but I wanna make sure that I'm not So it's not exactly like that, sorry. So what we do here is actually just a normal route where the element is an, a type of admin route. Imported. I don't see it. There you go. All right. So now let's refresh. Login view not defined. Auth route. Okay. So I forgot to import this, obviously. There you go. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So I'm going to try to view more. And it doesn't let me. It says, like, well, it doesn't say anything. But the idea is that we cannot see the details if we're not logged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in. And there you go. We can see the details now. Uh, so I'm going to go back to home. And, you know, test this. Okay, so I can see this. I can see this. I can see this. I can see this. Perfect. We can see everything. Now, if I log out again, uh, I'm going to try to see that. It's not going to let me. Perfect. That's exactly what I want. Now, the next thing, I want to make sure that only admins can create books because we don't want everyone to create books, right? So what I'm going to do is the following. Um, number one, in our nav bar, because we don't want to be displaying this ad book just, just as this. So what I'm going to do is the following. Um, I'm going to say, if the user exists or if the user is authenticated and user dot role is equal to admin then and only then we return the link otherwise we don't return anything so uh, i actually don't like how this looks so let me see if I can do like a like an and I'm uh, not an answer a ternary or at least I return like an empty nav that way we have the spacing I know again there must be more efficient ways of doing this but
Let's try this. So I'm going to put that inside the link. Ooh, what is going on? There you go. Where the, sorry, this goes there and that goes there. All right, let's try that again. There you go. That's what I was trying to go for, where you don't see the ad books here. And actually, if you click, like it's not hidden, it's just not being displayed. But if I log in as an admin, which only my user is an admin for now. So I'm gonna put password one, two, three. check is to see what is going on in our storage which i believe it should be fine uh, role user dot role admin okay triple equal check uh, you know i haven't been doing javascript in a while well i mean i have but okay let's see the console no, why is this not displaying right, i don't let's see if i do console Here we should get either true or false, so that way I can see what's going on there. Aha! So here we're having false. Why is that? Because um, I think I know why. Um, we're gonna go to our auth service. So it's authenticated, it's not returning the user, it's returning the whole thing. So what I need to do is actually destructure this. That way we only get the user. Now this should be working. There you go. So that, that, that was my small mistake. So now only if I'm an admin, I can go here. There's a caveat though. And I'm gonna log out so. Jason parts is no const. If I can do like a try catch or an if statement. Give me one second. Yeah, I need to. So, like, this is assuming that I can destructure. So, I need to. I need to make sure, first of all, that there's something that I can get from the local storage. Okay, so we have that working. Um, so 
oh sorry i had to attend to something but where i was um uh, where i left the let let off where i left where i left off sorry was here we're not logged in yet only admin should be able to reach this we're gonna do the same as what we're doing with the author so instead of author we're gonna create a admin route so also i'm definitely gonna be checking my notes because again i don't know this my memory but essentially this will be a very similar component component to our um auth route so const user equals is authenticated we're here we're not only going to be checking for the user um that it exists but also um we want to make sure that the user has a, an admin role. So I'm going to say return user dot role equals admin. And well, if the user has an admin role, then we're going to return the outlet that this user was trying to reach. Otherwise, we will return the login navigation. I mean, the login view, sorry. That's it. Very, very simple. we should see the auto completion perfect so now here we can put the at book inside of that route that way only login users can reach this and users that are that are admins so as you see automatically there's this this displaying the login so let's say that i log in as adri at test.com and do password one two three login it doesn't let me uh, it's just, it just keeps me rounding me to the login. I can see the, the details and I'm logged in, but I cannot go to the add books. Now, if I log in as an admin, I can do... I can... Well, I'm still on login. They should reroute me to home. But again, I can go now to add book. So I know that this is very simple. We have the creation. Uh, we don't have the leader edit or sign up. So I want to do one of those things at least. Uh, let's see if I can do sign up really quickly. Let's see how long it takes. Sign up. I should spell like that. Register, you have it as register, okay, that's fine. Register, register, all right, so let's see, register, register you, okay. So that means in our nav bar, we have to put register rather than sign up. Register, all right. So here, there you go. Um, what else? So let me see, I'm, I'm going to put Fernando, fernando.com, password123. Before I send that to the, before I enter that, I want to make sure that 
I don't have a user like that. Alright. Doesn't seem like so. And also, I want to make sure that if everything goes well, that I route the user to the home view. So I'm just going to do... Well, actually, I should do it from the register here. So do I have to navigate? Nope. So here, const navigate equals use navigate and when I submit I'm going to do navigate to home all right so now I'm gonna try this again or try it like for real all right so if I can log in there you go we're logged in and i'm logged in because i can see this and just to double check or verify if i go not to network but to the storage and i go to local storage and i go to here i can see the user fernando which is the one that i logged in with perfect um let's see if i can do this in the nav bar so i'm gonna put my button inside of that fragment and i'm gonna do the following i'm gonna do what can i do a p tag or a nav User dot name. It's funny because it kind of kind of appears, but I'm going to put an H3. It'll be color white. So style color. good so sign up works login works uh, last thing to do is the editing so I need to log in all right so now I'm gonna go to view more so here if I am an admin I'm gonna put like an edit button Let's go to our detail views. So we have all the book genres. Mm, let's see, what do I want to do? Do I want to put them below? Do I, do I want to put it below? Yeah, let's, let's do that. by 
Did I export it? Yeah. Should I auto import it? There you go. And the ID is the same, we'll just get it from here. Uh, that way it is a little bit cleaner. Um, I think I have the same in the home view. Let me see. Yep, so I'm gonna get rid of this. And same thing here. I'm gonna go to my service and I'm gonna create here export comms get all books. equals that return response and same thing here very important this has to, both have to be async so this will be async and we're gonna have to oh wait this doesn't matter that we it doesn't matter if it's async uh, asynchronous or not. The other ones are very very important. Response. Okay. Now we don't want to display that if oh wait no. register we can close okay so we're in details so the edit we only want to display the edit if the user uh, dot role is equal to ID. and by doing that check we're also implying that the user has to be authenticated obviously which I am and that's why I can see this edit button otherwise let's try with another user so I'm gonna do not see the edit button all right cool so now we have to create an edit route and for now I'm not gonna protect it because you know right now we're just testing it and if I protect it right away it'll just be cumbersome but once we have everything done then I'll put it under the admin route routes so route path edit book and obviously we need an ID to make sure we know which book exactly we want to edit. So edit book view. So now I just need to create that view because right now we're gonna get an error. So edit Essentially, this is going to be exactly the same as all the other forms. So I'm going to create my form in H2 that says edit book. And it's going to have a class name of form. Oh, I need to import this. In. Obviously, otherwise, we're going to get an error. Okay. It routes. I Spell this. Uh, I mean, uh, already corrected that. Okay, more. Alright, so let's log in. Uh, actually, you know what? For the moment, I'm just gonna put this outside just so like we can test. Later, I'll just put it inside. Um, and I also need to. Okay, fine. So I still need to sign in because I'm not gonna be displaying anything if I'm not an admin. So 
I guess I'll just stay signed in. That's it. There you go. Sorry. Oh, of course. That needs to be a link, not a button, per se. So, let's go to our details. Edit book, and this has to be within quotes because we're going to interpolate um, the ID where we're going to put book underscore ID. Again, there's a link which should come from direct router and done. guys so let's finish this oh let's not get demonetized let's shuffle this and probably need to get a new playlist but oh well all right so we're in the edit book book view and essentially what I'm going to do is open the add book view because essentially we have the same properties in the edit and in the create, it's just that the edit, we actually have to fetch them first. So we're gonna do the following and actually So first of all, I'm gonna create my book state. Set that equal to use state. Uh, now this is going to be a control component. So initially we're gonna have the same thing as the other. Um, we're gonna have the same things as we have on the at book view. So title is gonna be empty, author empty, image empty, and gender empty. But we are going to be using the use effect hook where we're going to be fetching our book that we want to edit. <clears throat> and I don't know if you kind of already guessed how, if you haven't guessed, well, it's very simple. Uh, since we got the ID through the use params hook, we can use that ID and make a call to our API with the get books by ID uh, method. So I'm gonna say const. Uh, I'm going to destructure this with the use params hook. So the use params is gonna give us a bunch of stuff, but we want specifically the ID. That way, in the use effect, First of all, I'm going to close this. Okay. 
use. It has no use anymore. I'm go to my uh, service. Sorry, uh, book service. And give up my ID. Okay, so we do have that. Close this. So I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna say we're gonna use dot then and, and dot cache, or we can use the same await. I like to use more async await, but I'm going to show you guys how to do uh, dot then and dot catch. So, just so you guys have like two ways of doing it. So, what I'm going to do is the following I'm going to do get book by ID and see how that was auto imported in case that you don't get the auto import, just import it there. And I'm going to pass the ID. Now, that is going to return something, it's going to, it's going to return uh, a promise, right? So it's gonna return a response or we're gonna, you know, it's either gonna be rejected or resolved. So what I can do is do set book to the response of data. Otherwise we catch and you know, we have, we have an error. And if we have an error, I don't know, we can console it. I'm not consoling in anything. Duh. Um, that's why. But let's create the inputs, and here is where I may aid myself with the add book view. So essentially, I'm just going to create this inputs, but. name of form control placeholder equals title type text then value equals book dot title now we don't have an on handle change but very easily we can create it handle change we pass an event we set the book um, whatever we're not uh, changing, we'll just use the spread operator. But everything else, what we are changing, we'll target the name of the attribute and set that equal to the value. Then the target value. Okay, that's fine. So now here, I can easily do on change equals handle change. Amen. 
forget the arm change handler. change that all right. all right so handle change <clears throat> for the image we're gonna do the same for the genre title i'm an author also author. so let's you know what i'm actually going to do the following one two and then this one is going to be author and I'm just going to put author there and then here oh my god there's going to be a genre genre same here genre okay so now the only thing that we're missing is the bottom You see how I have the unclick here instead of the on submit on the form? It really doesn't matter. But I'm going to put the on submit in the form this time just to you know have a change. So I'm going to put uh, save edit. Okay, so that should be fine. Now here because of that we have to put on submit. API call will be very similar to the create so edit book where we're going to pass the book object we'll make a actually this is going to be a put uh, put request Object. The only difference is that, uh, yeah, it's a put rather than a post. Very similar, but not not exactly. Um, so that should be it. We're missing now the handle submit. So cons handle submit. I know we haven't checked the, the actual website to see how it's looking, but we'll do that right now. By the way, I like this to be async. So what we're going to do is the following event dot prevent default. We're going to also make a call to the API. So I can do a wait and uh, edit book where I pass the book, the book object. Once that happens, I'm going to set all the book properties to, you know, to empty values. I'm going to reassign or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, reassign the attributes to empty strings. And I'm going to use a navigate, which I haven't declared here. So it's going to be cons navigate equals use navigate. And now I can controller command G and go to line 35 35 there you go and then I can do navigate slash home once I edit that book or I can go back to book details either or but that is fine um, and now we can do a handle submit here Okay, so let's see how this looks. And here you can see all the information, which means that it's working. And also we can change the information, which our handle mean our handle uh, handle change function is also working. My computer is low, that's why you see it like uh, stalling, but it works. If I refresh because I haven't submitted anything, you still get the same thing. So that is good. That is a good thing. 
uh, the button, I need to style it. Form, control, and btn, I don't know. Uh, btn outline. Outline dark? Oh, I always get confused. There you go. Yeah, just for the sake of consistency. Alright, so let's say that instead of epic and fiction, I want to say epic and war. I don't know. So, what else? JRKL Tolkien updated. So save edit. Mm, interesting. So on the back end, we don't have any errors. So that's a good sign, meaning that our back end is not faulty. But let's see localhost API books. Very simple mistake. I forgot to put the ID on the call. Wow. <laughs> okay. So here, uh, the only thing missing is the ID. So there's two things that we can do. Either we put the ID inside of the use effect call here, where I say, where is this? Uh, yeah. It's too cumbersome, honestly. I, I'm just gonna like pass the ID as a second value. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pass a book object and as a second value the ID. Therefore here I'm gonna pass a book object and as a second uh, parameter the ID. Where here I'm just gonna say ID. Then we know exactly which book, which book we want to update. So for example, right now we didn't update anything remember which one we're trying to change but as you see there's no update here so i'm gonna go back again to the two towers i'm gonna try to edit this i'm gonna put i don't know four towers and epic fiction so i'm gonna put epic war so four towers okay new more epic war okay that seems to be working let's say that i also want to edit the image let's say that i want to again we're gonna edit this and we're gonna change the image again and we're gonna put two towers perfect everything just as before and hmm, interesting okay so now we have that uh last thing that i want to do is the deletion and then we're done um Deletion is actually really easy, so we're gonna go to edit, and here I'm gonna put a delete button. Um, and also before that, I'm also gonna make the the delete API call. So I'm gonna say Axios put. I wouldn't need to 
press an object just with the ID, that's fine. So if we go to edit book view. Here I'm just gonna create another um, button that says delete. So I'm click delete book. And because we need to pass the ID, I'm actually gonna need to pass the function like so. Actually, before that, I'm, I'm going to create a function called handle delete, and you'll see why. And it's important ish handle delete. Sure, we can make it a sync. Why not? Event prevent default. Then we're gonna say const choice. Say what was it? Confirm. So this is going to return a true or false and the window confirm is exactly the same as an alert, but not only displays something, it also uh, returns a true or false value whether you click OK or cancel. So if not choice, meaning if, if, if false or if you chose cancel, then just return. And that's it, like no, no handle delete. Otherwise, then we can make a call to the delete book function. So I'm just gonna cut this and put it here. And I'm not sure that we even need the async. I don't think we need it, but I'll put it there. So then I'm just gonna call handle delete. And let's give a margin. So margin bottom. All right, that looks good. Um, probably I could give margin bottom of two, so there's no much more margin uh, compared to the inputs, but you know, it's me being, you know, nitpicking. So for example, let's say that I want, let's go to home page and I want to, Chronicles of the Fertile, uh, Max Stream, uh, oh, this test, for example. So edit, delete. So are you sure you want to delete this book? No, nothing happens. And by the way, before we try the actual one, uh, I'm going to do mm. we'll keep it simple. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my, I'm going to do two things. My navigate to the home view and also in order to change the state actually I'm not sure if I have to let's try this so I'm gonna delete this one yeah I think I do have oh that is not working okay uh, let's try this again Let's see. Confirm. Get get put put get. Okay, there's no delete call. Um, probably I messed up here. It's a uh, delete. There you go. All right. So let's try this one more time. There you go. There's no more book. Yeah. Nice. We're done with our CRUD. We have register. We have protected routes. We have login. We have everything. So. This should redirect me somewhere else. Um, before I finish this tutorial, we're, we're essentially we're done. Handle submit and navigate. 
I think I have a reload here. Yeah, let me try that again. That's the only thing uh, for this to pop up. Like I have to do a reload, so now it's yeah. What I can also do is do the reload here after the navigate. Let's see if that works. That's more, that's more like it. Okay guys, so if you like this tutorial, please give it a like, uh, subscribe, share it with your friends, and very soon I'm gonna be making a React Native with auth context with TypeScript tutorial. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.